I love this God that we serve. Like, I love this God that we serve because he brings the practical into his revelations for me all the time. And I want to share a story with you, and that's all I'm going to do with you today. It's going to be a short one, so bend your ear towards this because this is phenomenal how he brought this out, okay? So let me just start with the story. It's going to get hot real quick. So I'm trying to age gracefully, right? I'm trying to keep myself fit because I know what God has called me to do and I want to be in a position physically to be able to do what he's called me to do, to go when he calls me to go, to step on the stages that he calls me to step on. I want to be that guy like Caleb that keeps himself ready for the promise that was spoken so many years earlier. Then when the time comes, we go and we drive the giants out. That's the spirit I want to keep in my life. So we work at this, right? We put effort into this. We don't accidentally wake up and do something. We purposely set an agenda and do, right? So one of these things that I do is I keep a trail mode around the field that I live at, and it's a three mile down and back. And at every corner, I do a set of push-ups, and I can go anywhere from 150 to 325 push-ups, depending on how many I do per corner, right? And this is my workout that I do a couple times a week, just to keep um, fit. So it was on one of these runs, It's about 95 degrees outside, right? I'm in a pair of shoes and shorts, that's it. I'm a mile into this bad boy. I put a couple of sets of push-ups in. I'm sweating to death, right? I'm talking hot with it, everything, just bah, sweating. And I round the fifth corner. And all of a sudden, into me, into my area that I'm running, comes something I've never seen before in my life, right? And I'm going to asterisk this right here because I want to bring scripture in that hit me immediately with this, right? So 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, it simply says this. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Period. That's it. Now how you get the prize? First and foremost, you've got to finish the race, right? Right? So run in such a way as to get the prize, a.k.a. finish this daggone race, because you don't know where you at in it. But if you know you're still running, it ain't over. So finish the race. But what? But what problems come? Well, let me jump back into the story. So I'm rounding the fifth corner, like I said, right? And I'm supposed to be dropping down for a set of push-ups right here. But all of a sudden, out of the blue, I am swarmed. I'm talking, it looks like something from the plagues of Egypt, right? Flies just descend on me. Woof! and engulfed me. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. They everywhere. They all over me. Like, it was the craziest black cloud of flies I've ever witnessed, ever. It's like a movie scene. And I'm freaking out now because they everywhere. And why wouldn't they be? Like, I'm in their territory. Right next to me on the fence line is a whole herd of cows. And with the cows come the crap. And with the crap come the flies. And what I'm trying to tell you is, in this life, you're going to have some crap come. And when the crap comes, so the flies come. And they irritate them. And they descend upon you. And you know what you've got to do when those flies start in- infiltrating your life? You've got to keep going. I promise you, I was not stopping there in that field because if I were to stop, they were overtaking me. And if you stop in your life, wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, whatever's circling around you, causing you issues, if you stop right now, they win. And you're supposed to run in such a way that you get the prize, which means you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I know it's tough right now. I know it's through something that you have never been through in your life. Like it's like a movie scene playing out. But you got to keep going because you meant to make it to the end to win the prize, run in such a way to do so. So my feet got to moving just a little bit faster. I know it's hot out, but this is a new circumstance, so I'm rolling with it now, right? Because I don't want this feeling on me no more. I got like 500, 1,000 of these things all over me. So pop, 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 and I'm running. I get a mile and a half down the way, mile and a half, and they finally fluttered away from me, back to where they came from, back to the cows, to the patties, right? That's where they at. And I get to the end, to my turnaround spot. And you know what happens at the turnaround spot? The revelation, the realization that you've got to go right back through. Because see, what I do, my circuit is down and back. I start from my house, I end at my house, right? Down and back. I ain't going on the road because the whole road is a whole other hill course. And it ain't much in a car, but I promise you, once you start running on foot, those hills kill the fight in you fast. So I got my route. I'm heading back towards it. 
And this is where the next stage of this revelation comes to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, we only got so much time in this life. I'm 40 years old now. We have time, baby. Half time. If we're strong with it, we might make it to 80, right? God willing, the 80 good years. But we have time with it. We've reached the end of one circuit. We got to turn around and go again. And we think it because the commercials have been lying to us because the media have been telling us a, a falsehood that they're going to be the golden years, right? That's what I've heard my whole life, the golden years. And yet I don't know one golden year person who is living the life that they had planned when they were 20 years old. Not one. Why? Because the health issues start coming. They got to run through some stuff that they don't want to run through. The, the death of friends and spouses and mates, like that starts coming up into this time of life. It does not get easier. And I want to encourage you that even should you be following Jesus, if I find you as a believer right now with this video, just because you're walking with Christ doesn't mean he keeps you out of the things of this life. Matter of fact, Jesus warns us, he says, in this life you will have troubles, you will have hardships, but take heart, I have overcome this world. Like he promises, you're going to have them fly surrounding you, but take heart, I have overcome. What's he mean? I have given you, in me, you have found the endurance, you have found the power, the strength to keep putting one foot in front of the other, to run this race and finish this course like someone who is hell-bent on a prize, the crown of life, who was not giving up short of that, who will get it because it's been promised to them, and um, no matter what else comes, you will hear, well done, good and faithful at the end of this thing. And that is what we are going for. I don't care what comes your way. Don't be surprised by the hardships that come. They're going to come. It's a guaranteed. It's a certainty. Ain't nobody get through this life unscathed. We all got pain. We all got problems. We all got circumstances and issues in that plague us. We all have something that comes into our life that causes us loss. Every one of us. But in that... We find that strength inside. He says, I didn't give you a spirit of timidity, boy. I gave you a spirit of power, of love, of self-control. So control yourself, put one foot in front of the other, and you keep pressing on because you got a race to win. you got a course to finish. So you get back to it. This is half time. This ain't the end of it. This is the vineyard. This ain't heaven. So you get to moving like you want to make it to where I've called you to. I need you back home. So you turn right back around and you go right back at it. And you go at it like a conqueror ready to conquer. Yes, it's about to hit you again. Yes, you're about to endure some stuff you don't want to have to endure, but it's okay because you got the strength within. In my spirit, you got the resources to make it through. So watch. Turn with me to Galatians 9. It says this. Galatians 6, I'm sorry, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. I know you've been at it a minute, but let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now watch, baby. I'm a mile and a half in. I got bombarded by a swarm of flies like I've never been bombarded in my life, right? And I ran faster and harder than I should have at this point in my life and this point of this run. And now I got to go back and do it again. He said, don't grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, don't grow weary. I know you're tired with it, but don't grow weary. You got to make it to the end. So you run and keep putting that foot in front of the other. And just get ready for what's about to hit you. Because them haters, they're going to come. Them flies, those, those people, those naysayers, those people that tell you you can't when God says you can. Those troubles that try roadblocking you, but God says just go around them or over them or under them, but keep going. They're going to come. Don't grow weary and stop. So I determined that I'm going to finish this thing. I know I'm about to hit it head on. Ta, 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 come back down the lane, right? And sure enough, at the spot, there's the cows. There's the flies. They find me one more time, sweating to death, stinking nasty, and they loving life on me, right? I'm like their meal to them. And we keep putting one foot in front of the other until we round the last corner. Now watch what happens here because right here is where most of us, right here is where most of us just throw our hands up and cuss our God. Like, what you doing, God? I thought if you loved me, I wouldn't have to go through this because you know what hit me after I came around the last corner? 
I'm talking like gale force wind out because it was one of those days. You know what I'm saying? It's like a blow dry, 95 degrees and wah, blowing hard. And when I rounded and that funnel down through the trees come, it just hit me. And it was like I had a parachute on now. Like you're just trudging along. You're trying to put one foot, you weary with it. And now the adversity, the winds of adversity come your way. And you're like, God, for real? I got the flies, I'm running through the crap, and now I got the winds of adversity in my face? And we cuss God at this point. We throw our hands up. Why, God? Why? And never knowing, never realizing that it's a blessing in disguise because he has given you the strength. Don't you understand what's in that heart? You got the son of the living God in there. This is his residence. You are stronger than you ever imagined. He can send you a little adversity, a little wind your way because you can power through in the name of Jesus. You know what can? Them flies trying to hang with you. He sends that wind of adversity and it's just strong enough to let you through and them not to keep up because they were never meant to go with you where you're going. They were a temporary condition. They can't endure what you were made to endure. He says, take heart. I have overcome the world. Anything I send your way, you got the strength to get through it, I promise you, because you got the God of God on the inside. You got the King of Kings. So you endure. You do not grow weary. You call on my name and you keep pressing forward. Don't you cuss me when these winds of adversity come your way. You praise me because in the winds of adversity come the blessing, come the assurance that I got you. And I'm going to take care of every problem that surrounds you because that is my love for you. Every one of those flies trying to hang on to you, they ain't meant to go with you. You've got to leave them behind and i got to get rid of them for you. You ain't strong enough, but I am. And he sends the wind our way to what? To clear our path that we might arrive home like we're supposed to. Champions and conquerors overcoming every obstacle. Yeah, we got a little scratched in it, but he ain't calling us to be a knight in shining armor with this. He's calling us to be a warrior of Christ, more than a conqueror. We've been through a few struggles, been through a few scrapes. We got some tarnishment on us. We might not be as clean as the church likes us, but dang on it, we finished the race. We fought the good fight and we made it home. We came through every adversity. We dealt with every fly. We went through crap after crap after crap and we still made it home. How? By the name of Jesus, by the power of his blood, by the might of his spirit, because don't you know, he ain't no pacifist. He's a conquering king. And he comes that you might conquer as well. What's it say in the Bible? You are more than a conqueror. Ain't nothing can separate us from the love of God. Ain't no hardship, ain't no turmoil, ain't no nakedness, ain't no famine, ain't no sword, ain't nothing. And he says, when I send that adversity your way, put that chest up, endure it, because I'm getting rid of everything that shouldn't be with you because you are not meant to bring anything into this home. And don't you understand, that's exactly where I was headed. I was heading home, and there ain't a fly welcome in my house. Them annoying little things, that ain't where they supposed to live. They get in that place, ah, we killing them, right? Fly swatters galore. They meant for the outside, we meant for the inside. And you and Jesus, that's what you meant, and you meant to walk in clean with it. No flies attached. So when he sends that adversity, praise God, he's gearing you up. For eternity with him because he's blowing away all this crap this world can send your way he's blowing away all them haters all them flies and he says when you get home when you walk through these pearly gates come through the door of my house i got you i got you because you endure because you finished the race because you run like you want to win a prize i got you it says then i saw heaven this is revelation 21 then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Look at the flies, he gets away. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. You see this, baby? You see this? He knows what you're doing here. He knows what you're walking through, what you're running through. He knows what you're having to deal with. And when you make it home, he's got the reward. He's got the crown of life and the rest in his arms. No flies welcome. And all he's trying to do is bring you through. And all I'm trying to do today is encourage you to get through. How you get through? 
you man up, you man of God up, let's just put it like that. And in Jesus' name, you wake up today and you let those feet hit the ground like you got purpose and you got destiny because you do, you got them both. In the name of Jesus, you are not here by accident. You got a race to run, son. Get to stepping. And if adversity hits you, praise God in the midst of it. Confuse your enemies. They can't endure where you're at. They're going to look at you like you're crazy, but you're crazy finishing. And they crazy falling behind because they ain't supposed to rise with you. You rising yourself in the name of Jesus. You got some flies hanging on you? Cool. It's going to be a momentary thing. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them stop you because if they stop you, they got you. You keep putting every day you wake up one step heading towards your God. One more prayer. One more thanks. One more praise. One more. And you run like you want to win the prize. And for me, I'm just letting you know the prize that, like, I will give everything in my earthly possession to hear, well done, good and faithful. Because I know what my master has called me to. I'm the slave of him. I'm his servant. But he just doesn't see me as the servant. He sees me as a friend. And I don't want to disappoint my friend. He just doesn't see me as a friend. He sees me as a brother. I don't want to disappoint my brother. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful. I don't want to see any shame in those eyes. I want to win the prize. And I can't think of a better one than that. Well done, good and faithful. Come and share in your master's happiness. You did exactly what I called you to do. I understand it was hard. You had to go through some crap in this life. But I'm so proud of you. You took hearts. And you overcame through my name, through my blood, through my spirit. You overcame. You continued when everyone else fell to the wayside. You didn't stop. You finished the course. You fought the fight. And I'm encouraging you, do the same. Have a heart that is likewise. And the only way that you can begin this race, you don't even step foot onto the course unless you call on the name of Jesus. Unless you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you ain't even made it to the starting line. But if you have done that... If you have gotten up out of the darkness and you dared said yes to Jesus, you dare said yes to follow him in this life, your race has begun. That is not the ending point of your salvation. That is the beginning. And now when you wake up every day, you find out what it is he wants you to do. You get before him and you walk with him daily like you want to win, like you want to make it to the other end, like you are going to see the prize that he has for you. Because this eternity, it's meant for all of us who can call him Abba Father. This, this forgiveness is meant for all of us who have hearts that are made clean and pure by the blood of his son. And this victory is made for all of us who will not yield to the flies, who will not stop in the middle of it, but will continue on knowing that it's going to be hard, knowing that it's going to be tough, but knowing that in the end it is so much more worthwhile than the trivial little trials that we had to endure here. Because his, he has got exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or imagine to place upon us during that victory. This is my story. This is the revelation God gave me in it, and I just wanted to encourage you with it. I didn't want to get it lost to the memories of time. I wanted to put it down that it might help someone at some time. And if it's you today, I pray call on him. If you have him in the name of Jesus, keep on keeping on. Put one foot in front of the other because your victory lies ahead. Don't you quit because he didn't. He saw his through to the point of death. Let us have spirits to do likewise. He died for us. Let us live for him in the name of Jesus. God bless. Hi guys, my name is Cash Hunsley and I just wanted to personally take the time to thank you for watching this video. The privilege of sharing what God has laid on my heart is incredible. And I pray that as you watch this, your heart was hit as well. And if it has, I ask you to partner with us in simply sharing this with someone you know could use it. They're out there, they're hungry, and they need to have the love of Jesus put in their lives, put in their path, get in their way. And I pray our ministry <laughs> works in that exact endeavor. We're called to summon nations, and I ask you to partner with us in doing that. I appreciate your prayers and your shares. In the name of Jesus, God bless.